Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Solidify modifier. While this modifier may seem simple, it can be used in a lot of different ways. So let's get into it. The first use we want to look at for the Solidify modifier is a really simple one. Just adding thickness to something that's one plane thick. Take a look at this glass vase. It may not look terrible, but there's something off about it. It almost looks like a solid piece of glass. The reason behind this is because the light is entering one side of the glass, passing all the way through, and then exiting the other side, rather than entering one side, exiting the inside of that side, passing through the middle of the air of the glass container, entering the glass again, and exiting the glass again. But because this glass has no thickness, the renderer doesn't know how to do that. This is a case where the Solidify modifier can help. Choosing my vase, I'm gonna add a Solidify modifier. One thing you'll definitely want to do when modeling with the Solidify modifier is make sure you apply scale and that you're modeling your objects to scale. For instance, this vase is 450 millimeters tall, which is about 17 inches tall. Pretty tall for a glass vase, but it gets us in the right neighborhood. Now thick glass might be only about 5 millimeters thick, so I'm going to change the thickness of this to 5 millimeters. Let's go ahead and put this in rendered mode again and see how it looks. Immediately, we're getting better results. They might not be perfect, but they are a lot better than they were. Let's take a look at some of the other options and how they can affect the results here. First, we have the rim fill. In the case of objects that are a single plane like this, or non-manifold object, there's gonna be a gap between the solidified faces and the original faces. When rim fill is on, it bridges those gaps. When it's off, it does not. So here you can see, there's no glass between these two sheets. If we turn rim fill back on, that returns. When we're in simple mode, the only rim option doesn't extrude surfaces parallel to the original one, but instead only adds the, the perpendicular rim. I would suggest toggling this option to see which results you like better. The even thickness option affects our object in simple mode by trying to maintain the same thickness even around sharp corners. So if you do have some sharp corners in your model, try toggling this on and off to see what you like better. The offset option determines which direction the thickness will come in. For instance, here's our object with the solidify modifier turned off. And here it is with it turned on. The new faces were generated to the inside. That's because the normals of our object are facing outward. We can always check the normals by going into edit mode, going to face mode, and turning on display normals and choosing the face option. As you can see, they're facing out. That means if my offset is negative one, the new faces are created away from the normals. If I change this to one, they're shifted to the outside. At zero, they're created equally on both sides of my original data. If you require parts of your model to be thicker than other parts, you can use vertex groups to achieve this. Here, I'll create a vertex group, setting the top to 0.5 and the bottom to 1. Now, if I assign that vertex group, you can see the top gets thinner. If I increase the thickness, you can see this effect more pronounced. In the normal section, there are a couple of options. Flip inverts all of the normals of the object. Sometimes this is what you'll need to get the effect you're looking for. The high quality normals option enables a more specific algorithm for calculating the normals. For some models, this might be what you need to get the effect you're looking for, but it is a slower process, so keep that in mind. The materials section lets us choose different materials for the generated parts of our object. Let's add two more materials to this object. The material offset is the index of the material that you want that part of the object to use. So for the material offset, if I change this to 1, which would be the green material, it seems like the whole object has turned green. However, it still has the glass material on the outside. Let's go change the glass material so we can see that. So now the glass material is solid white. The newly created offset faces are the green, because those are the second material, 0 being the first, and then the rim can be set to yet another material. 
in cases where you want to add a subdivision surface modifier after your solidify modifier, you may want creases along your edges. You can crease the inner faces of your rim, the outer faces of your rim, and the rim itself. If you want to add a bevel modifier, the bevel convex option will add bevel weights to the outside edges of our mesh as well. In some cases, if you add too much thickness, you might get some self-intersection in the middle of your object. Let's look here. As I increase the thickness and the center of our object starts to converge on itself, we start to see some issues here and here. Thickness clamp can reduce the amount of these offsets to help reduce self-intersection. If that's not enough, angle clamp might also be needed as it considers the angles in the geometry and not only the lengths of the edges. If you need the newly generated parts of your object to have vertex groups, you can put them here. Simply create groups and leave them empty. Then in your modifier, select which group those new vertices should be placed into. Here is the rim group, the shell group. If your object is more complicated than this, you may need to use complex mode instead of simple mode. The manual states that this algorithm is actually able to solidify shapes like Mobius strips and Klein bottles. Architectural wall layouts and other things like that will be handled by the complex mode a lot better. Depending on your model, choose the thickness mode that gives you the best results that you're looking for. Fixed, even, or constraints. Fixed is very similar to simple mode without the even thickness option turned on. The even mode is similar to simple mode with even thickness and high quality normals, but works better for sharp corners. However, if you have more than three faces coming together in the same spot, you'll want to use constraints mode. This is the most advanced model to try to get the optimal thickness. The boundary setting is a fix for holes in your model. None disables this. Round adjusts the boundary for the opening to face inwards and flat adjusts the boundary of the opening to be flat. In addition to solidifying things like a glass bottle, one use that I've found for solidify that comes in really handy is in architectural modeling. Here's a simple floor plan that I found on Google Images. I'm going to trace this out using a plane. I'm going to use just 6 inch walls just to keep things simple. With my plane set to 6 inches by 6 inches, I can just start extruding this. Now, once I have this floor plan laid out to scale, I want to make sure I apply the scale, Control A, apply scale, and then I can add a solidify modifier. Changing my offset to one, I can then enter my wall height as my thickness. So let's say I want eight foot walls. Now, immediately we see a problem because half of the model is going in one direction and half is going the other. That's because my face normals got screwed up as I was extruding this face out. Going into edit mode, I'll simply select all my faces, hit shift N, and that will pop them all in the same direction. Another benefit with the solidify modifier is it works well with the boolean modifier. If I wanted to poke windows into these walls, it would be very simple in a procedural way. I would just need to model some cubes that are the size of my windows. Then place them into the walls at the correct places. Then I'll move them to their own collection. Then on my wall object, I'll add that boolean modifier, set the operand type to collection, and choose my windows. Then if I hide those window objects, I've got nice cutouts that are completely procedural. I hope this introduction to the solidify modifier has been helpful. Give it a try. You may need to tinker with them to get the exact look you're looking for. I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, Make sure to click the like button and also subscribe. Also, be sure to join our Discord server. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.